Hi. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Yep. Okay, yep. great. Present button. There we go. Okay, so I want to talk to you all about why I think merchants should choose the die staple coin. And, uh, you know, just before we get in, I'm going to touch on this at the end of the presentation, but I, it isn't immediately intuitive when you think about a cryptocurrency or stable coin to think that one is better than the other is the best way to tap into the, uh, the decentralized finance ecosystem. So we, we call it DeFi, but in the, it just means decentralized finance. It's all the financial applications that are built on the blockchain. Uh, but to understand why you should choose DAI, we have to talk about the structure of DAI and why it's different from other cryptocurrencies and other stable coins. And j just so we know, a stable coin, if we're not familiar, is a cryptocurrency that is pegged to the US dollar or another fiat currency. So in the case of DAI, our, fiat, our stable coin, uh, DAI is pegged to the US dollar. So if you have one DAI, that cryptocurrency is always worth $1. And obviously, you know, for a merchant, this makes it great for payments. But there's a lot of stable coins out there. There's Tether, there's Circle Dollars, there's Paxos Dollars. The, the question for you is, why is DAI the best one to access this new ecosystem? And, you know, how, how do you end up benefiting by accepting it as a merchant? So first, I want to say to meet DAI. As I mentioned, it's a, it's a uh, stable coin, it's pegged to the US dollar, but DAI is different. It's the world's first decentralized stable coin. And this is the really important thing. Because if, if you think about the way that other people have chosen to represent US dollars in the blockchain, what they do is they take dollars in a bank account and they issue an IOU on the blockchain. And then you can use this IOU and if you're connected enough, ultimately you can redeem that IOU with the company that gave it to you. Now, this is very different from the way that DAI is created. And because of that, it actually impacts merchants quite a bit. DAI is created by users. There's no centralized entity that creates or destroys or holds DAI. You, you actually create it. Uh, or more accurately, customers create it. Because of this, it has a few key benefits to the users of DAI. And, and I'm not talking about merchants here. I'm talking about the people that use DAI in the first place. So for one, it's the most technologically advanced stable coins. This is an often overlooked point. But uh, DAI, you know, one of the examples of how this manifests itself has a function in its smart contract called permit. And what permit lets you do is make transfers without paying gas fees in Ether. And I, I don't know if anybody's tried to use the Ethereum blockchain lately, but gas fees are becoming quite a problem. So the fact that DAI is able to circumvent these gas fees by having this special function is actually a huge benefit to people who are using DAI. And they still have to pay gas fees. It's just that they're able to pay them in DAI if they have the right setup. Uh, it's cheap to transact. And now this applies to all stable coins, and so does the next one. But you can send DAI from you know, here to China, New York to China very quickly for a few cents. And if you've used the legacy banking system or any other international payment system, it, you will pay a lot more money for that. And then finally, it's very fast to transfer. You could send DAI anywhere in the world in 17 seconds. And there's even layer two applications. So applications built on top of the main blockchain that let you send it even faster in milliseconds. So now we're talking about international payments in milliseconds. It's very exciting. But in order to understand why DAI is special from a merchant's perspective, we actually need to understand the way that it's created in this decentralized, user-generated fashion. So the way that the maker protocol works, which is the protocol that creates and, and manages the DAI supply, is as a debt facility. So users come to our protocol, and let me, let me just use a, re a very simple example. Let's say that you own a house, and, and this isn't an example that's applicable today because the protocol today lends against cryptocurrencies and has a much different subset of users, but the concept remains the same. So I'm gonna use a house as an example. You have a house, and you bring it to the maker protocol. You can now borrow DAI against your house. 
It's almost like going to a bank and taking out a mortgage, but you're giving it to yourself. So you come to, to the maker protocol with your house. Let's say your house is worth $100,000. The protocol will say you can now borrow 80,000 die against this house. And when you do that, that is actually the creation event of that die. That die was just created and added to the supply. Now, your house is going to be custody with the protocol at this point, or at least the ownership of it. So if you want to get your house back, you have to destroy that die. But for the interim, the die exists. Now, why is that so important to understand? Because if die is created as a loan, the people that create the die, the last thing they ever want to do is hold die <laughs> because they're paying interest on that die. Imagine you go to a bank and you take out a mortgage. You don't want to hold that mortgage. You're paying interest. You're going to go spend it. You're going to buy the house. You're going to pay the contractor. You're going to, you know, you're, that, that's why the central banks love lending so much because it's how the economy kickstarts. And die is the same way. Every time die is created, it immediately has to be sold. And there's two things that our users do once they create die. They either create it, they, can, they want to convert it to another asset. So a lot of the times they're looking for trading leverage. You know, they'll deposit Bitcoin and then they'll go buy more Bitcoin with the die. <laughs> but a good portion of them, an increasing portion of them, they want to spend it on goods and services. And this is where it becomes very important to merchants. Because if you think about this flow, there's all this die getting generated, and right now it goes to exchanges. So let's try and figure out what percentage of die actually is going to get spent on goods and services rather than just looking for trading leverage. And here are two charts. Uh, they're from the inception of the Coinbase die USD market. And we don't have any specific numbers about this because our system is decentralized, so we, we can't know exactly what the users are doing but we can infer things from charts like this. So volumes are going up, that's good. But this is the more interesting chart on the bottom. This is the percentage of DAI that's getting converted to dollars versus the percentage of DAI that's getting converted to cryptocurrency. And if you notice, it's been going straight down to the point where we are actually below 20% of DAI getting converted to other cryptocurrencies and about 80% getting converted to dollars. Now, there's a few reasons you'd convert to dollars, but the main reason is that you had an asset, you took a loan out against it, and now you're going to go spend this dollars on some, these dollars on something else. And as a merchant, what you can do here is instead of having the users go to Coinbase to exchange their DAI for dollars, you could skip that entire step and just sell them goods and services directly for the DAI. You're, you're actually, by, by, by integrating DAI in your point of sale system, you're actually eliminating the middleman, not adding one. So that, that is the core reason why merchants should add DAI over other stable coins, because you are actually intermediating the entire flow of the creation of the currency by offering goods and services in exchange for DAI. So how big of an opportunity is this for you? Now, these numbers are very volatile. <laughs> I won't pretend they're not. But at the moment, there's about $3.3 billion in this ecosystem. And DAI, as you can see here, there's this little metric called maker dominance. DAI and maker are the bedrock of this ecosystem. So by adding DAI, you're adding access to this entire market. But finally, I just want to point out, it's great that you can access the DeFi and blockchain ecosystem by adding DAI, but DAI has other benefits that I didn't even talk about. DAI has real world users. At this moment, DAI is actually the most popular cryptocurrency in Argentina. It, tr it trades about 10 times more volume than Bitcoin. People in Argentina are using DAI to get out of the peso to, to uh, get stability on their savings. And once people start saving in DAI, they're going to want to spend in DAI too. They don't want to have to convert to pesos every time. So keep in mind that even you have access to this new burgeoning industry of DeFi, but you also have access to all the legacy users of DAI, which if you, ha if you have access to the savers, you have access to their spending. So I wanna leave some time for questions and say thank you. Hope you choose DAI. My, my name is Greg DePrisco again. I'm the head of business development at the Maker Foundation and please 
do not hesitate to email me. My email is greg at makerdow.com. And if you're on Twitter, my Twitter is G underscore DIP. And thank you very, very much.